sitting down here at the Nine Foot Homemade Oak Bar. Coach Ram, Jim Ramazinski, another football Friday, even though they are playing on a Saturday. We have the head coach of the Evergreen Park Mustang football team here. How are you, Coach? Good. How are you? Good. Good. So, not the the first week that you wanted to have because you guys end up taking a loss to Marengo, but it was it was a close game. And so you, you, I'm sure you learned some things from it. What were your initial impressions of, of that first game? Well, like any with any loss, you know, we were all disappointed. The entire team, coaches, um, what, you know, watching it happen there, you're kind of like, when are we going to pick this up and finish this game off? Um, and we, we just didn't, you know, we just got outplayed. Um, we got beat up front and, you know, when you reflect on it, you, Friday right after a loss, you know, it's kind of like, what are we going to do, all this? Then you regroup, you watch the film. We watch the film as a team, the uh, entire game. You see that the mistakes that we made, a lot of them are correctable. Some, some were some mental mistakes that, you know, we could chalk it up as first game, long road trip, all that. But at the same time, we're, we're not trying to make excuses. We, we lost, um, and we know we have to get better. First points of the season is a safety. Mm-hmm. Is that because you had six kids move on to play college ball, you've got a little bit of turnover in the team, and it's the first time they get live action, and you may have some inexperience? Like You see a safety as the first thing that happens where the other team gets one against you, gets possession of the ball. Uh, what happened there? Yeah, I mean, we, we kicked the ball off. Uh, we ended up getting a stop on defense. I think they got one first down that first series. They punted the ball. Uh, you know, it, it's this is how football goes. It's a combination of mistakes that lead to something like a safety. We we are receiving the punt. We do not fair catch it. It rolls down to, well, I don't know, probably about the 10-yard line. Our offense gets on the field. We struggle a little bit early, uh, go three and out go to punt the ball and our long snapper who is reliable was our long snapper last year. Uh, you know, he just made a mistake and I don't blame him personally because the mistakes are going to happen. That that's not what lost us the game. Um, no, cause you get it. You get a 10, nine lead at half. Yeah. I mean, we, that's the thing. Like you, you end up putting more points on the board in the first half and it's a game at, at halftime. You must think like, okay, we've had some mistakes, but we can win this thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean that, and that's the message we sent, you know, we're, we're we're winning this game and we're winning it by not playing nearly to our potential. And if we continue to kind of push it and make sure we're playing up to our standards, this should be a win. But unfortunately, uh, second half came around. Uh, we, we didn't have a good third quarter. And, you know, Marengo was able to kind of build a lead. And then, you know, we ran out of time. I mean, Marengo was able to run... 59 plays to our 35 and and they didn't average a lot of yards per play it's just they had such a volume correct yeah they had a large volume of plays and i mean we were getting stops we were um we were putting them in third and long situations we were doing the right stuff it's just you know once in a while they would get one on us and they would just extend the drive and you know uh, they were ground and pound and they were running that clock um and you know unfortunately we ran out of time. Yeah, it's a road trip at the beginning of the year. You're in a you're in a you're in a town. Yeah. We, I, you know, I think I've talked to you about this. I've talked to other coaches about this. When you go to a town and the whole town's out because that's their team, that's quite an environment to walk into first week. You keep the game close. You regroup. You go back at it. What did you learn from this game that you're you're telling your kids about this week? Well, we found out some of our who some of our players are that we weren't sure on. I mean. You know, guy, get names that you've heard before. Caleb Kaiser, you know, he came up big, 15 tackles at the free safety position. That You don't see that too often in a high school game. Um, you also, he was coming up really hard, helping us in the run game a ton. Uh, Devin Herrera is a name you guys heard before, Lyman. He was a defensive lineman who ended up getting uh, an interception for us, sniffed out a screen and was able to, you know, anytime a D lineman gets an interception, that's, that's kind of a fun moment. Uh, on offense, Rowan Smythe, pretty good debut as the Evergreen Park varsity quarterback, threw for two touchdowns. Um, and, you know, one of those touchdowns was to Ellis Jackson. The other one was to 
Arshon Powell, a uh, transfer who came in, very uh, dynamic player and did a, did a really good job for us. Awesome. So, there, you know, you found some players. I'm sure you found some things that you're going to end up working on. You got an opponent on a Saturday afternoon, which I would think now that the schedules are always on Friday nights, having to travel to Longwood, do something really odd like, hey, we're getting ready in the morning for, for an afternoon football game on a Saturday uh, kind of messes with your schedule. How are you planning for that this week? Uh, well, obviously, everybody's aware there'll be a timeline to follow Saturday morning, but like we're we're not going to look at that as anything that should get in our way because if we're playing the football that we want to play, if we have the focus that we want our boys to have, this should be um, this shouldn't be an issue of getting up on a Saturday morning, getting to the game, and you know if anything, it, it's um, it'll be it'll be a good day because right now. We had a good practice yesterday, very good practice, actually. Uh, obviously, I think a lot of our guys and our coaches took a look at ourselves really closely this week and see, you know, what can we do to improve ourselves, help our team. And so far, I see that message has come across from the, to the players, uh, and we're hoping to continue to have a good week of practice. All right, so you look at Longwood now, coming up on, on a Saturday uh, what do you know about this team other than what you learned last year when you played them? Because the rosters do change. Your roster changed a little bit. Uh, what are you looking at going into this game? They had some very dynamic players last year. Uh, you know, first play of the game last year, they run a 75-yard touchdown and definitely surprised our players on the field. They were not expected. Was there a trickery or was it just like you ran up the middle? Like what, what was what was that? No, they, they had a player, they ran a stretch play to the right side of the field on the boundary and the guy beat us all in a foot race that guys were late getting there and you know that's why especially yesterday at practice we're talking about you know you have to play full speed at all times because you you know we we don't know a ton about this team's roster uh comparison by comparison to uh conference opponents so you know we're just planning for hey they're gonna have they're gonna have somebody who's gonna be able to fly around. They're gonna have a pretty big physical line, and we want to just play up to our potential. If we play to our potential, good things will happen. You talk about the line, defensive line, offensive line. Uh, they're not the flashy players, but they really are the base that a team is built around. And you know, again, you get guys that are coming in, guys that are leaving, guys that got bigger. Uh, who, you know, maybe maybe all of a sudden in a position that they weren't in last year. Uh, is that an all-year thing you're working on that line? Is it because they have to they have to kind of gel and get used to playing and that can only come from in-game experience? Well, in-game experience is invaluable for them. You know, the first time together as a unit on offense and defense, you, you can learn a lot about your team and you learn a lot about your players, uh, especially, you know, after watching the film. I mean... Like this, this sounds cliche, but the truth is, we're just trying to improve more and more every day. How can we, how can we get our players to play their, to their best ability at all times? And you know, like you see different faces coming in. Uh, I know this is not lineman related, but you know, we have a sophomore step up, play linebacker for us this week. Kind of an unexpected surprise, and he, Gavin Wheeler did a great job for us. Um, so you never know who you know, who's going to show up. Um, but yeah, of course we work every single day uh, with our offensive and defensive line to get them, get the correct technique, get the correct plays down, and obviously get them moving forward and being physical. You know, you get a lot of two-way players. I, I know that over there. Um, I would imagine you have two-way linemen. Mm -hmm. And uh, is that a benefit or a detriment to be a two-man, two-way lineman? Because you think to yourself, well, they know the moves coming at them. On the other hand, in the heat of the moment, do things get mixed up what they should be doing? Well, it's just, I mean, it's mostly about conditioning out there. You know, like if, if you're going full go O-line and then you're also on the D-line, there is a certain point where you're going to feel it. And we're trying to keep, teach our kids to push through that to make sure that you're uh, giving your best effort at all times and leaving everything out on the field. All right, so this matchup, what's the key to it? Like I don't want you giving away any secrets, of course. Don't give me anything that's gonna 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 help the other team. But like, what what 
what do you look at? What are you telling your guys like is a major focal point of taking on Longwood? Uh, we need to have a fast start. Uh, last week, we you did, need to throw a 70 some yard pass right away. Yeah, or something we like need that. to yeah. have a fast start. We need to, you know, last week we, yeah, we were, had the lead at half, but you know, we were down nine, nothing pretty quick into that game. And you know, that's, I mean, it, it's obviously it's not a good start. It could have an effect on how some people are looking at the game, but we, we need to have a fast start. We need to on both sides of the ball, special teams, Everybody's got to be locked in, focused. And if we do that, uh, things should go well. But, you know, again, we got to make sure that everybody is ready to go. Okay. Head coach, Jim Ramazinski, Coach Ram, for all the kids out there. Uh, I had Amy Kazin on one of the most recent episodes of the EP podcast, and she was talking about all the stuff they're getting ready for uh, a month from now with homecoming. I know that's a long ways off for you, and you could, it, when you're ready for it, <laughs> You can go back and you can listen to that episode and find out what they have planned for you because they have a lot going on this year around this. There's like a street festival happening before the game. Like yeah. it's going to be goofy. No, I, I've been. You're I've, aware of it? I, I am aware. Uh, <laughs> I know you're shocked. I am. I, like, I, I know you ought to put on the blinders, just focus on things. And like, I know homecoming is difficult on coaches because of all the extra stuff and you just want to prep for the game. But I mean, like. This, this seems like it's going to be big in the preparations over the next couple of weeks, just getting ready for it. Uh, pretty exciting around the school. Yeah, it's definitely super exciting. I mean, you know, as much as coaches possibly, you know, look at homecoming week as a distraction. And at the end of the day, we, of course, we, we're always talking about stay focused, but, you know, like I always think about it like, all right, seniors, last homecoming, of course, we want our boys to have fun experience have a great experience and we want the entire school to do that so we're excited for it when the time comes we just got to take care of business between now and then all right it's a road game it's on saturday it's their only saturday game from what i can see her taking a quick glance at the schedule uh 12 30 start at longwood and then next week bat back home First game of the year at home under the lights on a Friday night against Oak Long. And uh, we will talk before that, Coach yep. Ram, hopefully with a one and one record. Hope so. Right. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. It's the EP Podcast. All things Evergreen Park. It's the EP Podcast. Evergreen Park.